Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So, we're in week three of a four week modeling core video series. Um, so, that's four Monday movies in a row that are going to be focusing on what I think are the core modeling techniques in 3D Studio Max. Two weeks ago, we started off with primitives modeling. We said, okay, what can we build using just primitive objects? And we made a basic, inorganic, structural, architectural kind of endeavor. The week after, so that would be last week, we went over Boolean modeling, where we said, okay, if we just use primitives and modifiers, and we use Boolean operations, what can we build? And we found out that there's actually a lot more possibilities once you can start taking away geometry. All your objects don't have to be uh, these predefined things. This week we're going to be looking at spline modeling. We're going to say, okay, if I had the ability to draw an arbitrary shape, what could I make using that and the modifiers and the booleans and the primitives that we talked about earlier? So we're going to be taking it to the next level. And finally, next week we're going to be looking at polygon modeling itself. We're going to say, okay, suppose that I could make anything, anything, what could I do? And then we'll be looking at polygon modeling and, and the considerations that need to go into that. So with regards to this week, I want to give a quick disclaimer before I jump into it. What I'm going to be showing you is only a subset of what's really possible with splines. When we talked about primitives, that's pretty much all you can do with primitives in, in, in a modern pipeline. When we talked about booleans, we looked at most of the things you can do, but it's still very extensible and robust. Now that we're at splines, I can only show you some of what you can do, and I strongly encourage you to play around with this on your own and start researching what else you can do with splines. Um, beyond what I talk about. This week I want to show you how to make a gear which is a simple stamped operation um, in 3D Studio Max using splines and then after that I want to show you a quick demo of how you can combine splines with some of the spline oriented modifiers like lathe um, in order to create these procedural slash arbitrary objects that I think you're gonna like. So how long do I have here? Uh, about seven minutes. So let's dive into it. I'm going to show you how to do a gear very quickly and then I'm going to show you the the lathe object. So to start off I've got a circle and that's going to be the center. That's going to be where the axle meets the meets the gear. And then for the outside of the gear I'm going to want a star shape. My experience has shown me that that the star is actually very useful for creating gears because it gives you all those outer points and it allows you to set the, the tooth depth in this second radius right here. So I'll just say right there for now. And the number of points is how many gear teeth you have. So I'm going to use 24 teeth, which is pretty good. So I'm going to take the star and convert it to an editable spline. And uh, what I need to do is select the inside teeth and then the outside teeth and perform a chamfer operation which is going to make it a little bit more boxy, a little bit more like what people really expect a gear to look like. So you can kind of see me dragging that right there. And I try to go for about half and half. So the gap between here is the same as the gap between here. So I'm going to take the inside again, control I to select the inverse. And then I'm going to use chamfer again, bring it down just like that. And now all I have to do is tell Studio Max, okay, this center piece needs to be cut out of the spline object. And the best part is that 3D Studio Max knows that because this outer shape is contiguous or continuous, and the inner shape is continuous, that this gap between them needs to be solid and everything else is not. Let me show you. So if I say, uh, let's keep it simple, I'm just going to hit extrude and that gives us the depth. And 3D Studio Max knows, oh okay, yeah. This needs to be solid and the inside needs to be needs to be hollow. And you can use this to your advantage. This is actually a very popular technique with uh modeling cars where you can say, okay, I want a uh, really cool looking drilled brake uh disc. So you can say like, oh okay, yeah. Here we go. Take this, narrow it down, and you can very quickly see the final result. I can move it wherever I want inside of this object. It's very cool. 
and you can put as many of these as you want and you can use a um, you can use the uh, circular array that I showed you in the previous videos in order to create a whole bunch of these in a circle you know what I mean but I'm not going to go into it because I don't have too much time left but you can see what makes this so powerful what I'm doing is I'm abstracting away how the object is built on some on some level all it is is a shape that's been created in 3D and that affords me the freedom to just model what I really want which is the the two-dimensional shape the cutouts without having to worry about oh, okay you know the tessellation these verts need to be connected these ones over here and it's really powerful a lot of fun so let's take it to the next level if you ask yourself okay what else can we build well this, you can actually take this concept pretty far what if I wanted to build a jet engine it's a nice um, tubular object it's a perfect case study for for using the um, for using the the lathe object so I'm gonna take my very basic shape here and I'm gonna apply a lathe modifier and what lathe does is it takes the spline and it rotates it on an axis and you can pick the axis here you can say okay no it needs to be on the x-axis on the y-axis or the z-axis the only one that really looks good for now is y and then you can choose how you want to align it so I'm gonna move the pivot out just a little bit right there I'm gonna make this 360 degrees and now I can define the shape of my turbine after the fact I can go back on the modifier stack and say okay hang on suppose that I wanted to change some of these details I can do that now because I have access to the components that build this object I don't have to go back and, and mess with the polygons delete huge sections in order to remodel it in fact I can even go through and re-add geometry and that's what makes this technique really powerful and very I want to say graphic but not like in the violent sense like it's shocking I mean graphic in the sense that it's it's kind of cool it's cool to watch you know just filling in the detail making it elegant and smooth smart just like my girlfriend and we're gonna you know just keep doing this keep fleshing it out it, it's totally arbitrary I mean engines are actually pretty easy to do <laughs> just because almost anything looks cool as long as it's reasonably inorganic and that's what this technique is all about where I can say the actual polygons are generated in this procedural way what what I really care about is the profile of the object being created I only care about the profile and everything else can be just procedural so this is somewhere between booleans which are you know mathematically sound perfect um, you know generated almost from a script and polygon modeling which is the the ultimate abstract object it's saying I want polygons here and nowhere else so I encourage you to to try this out and play around with it yourself find out what it means to have an object that is that is built using the formula and using what you tell it on an explicit basis which is which is this um, spline this profile so until next week please try looking up loft see what that can do for you as opposed to being a uh, an array uh, a, a um, circular uh, composition like this it uses a, another spline to be a path so it's great for roads for pipes it's great for things like um, uh, car parts a lot of fun try it out next week we're gonna be going over polygon modeling where you can start with a basis like this but then you can really bring it into its own uh, with detail that you've crafted on a polygon level till next week Tune in for another Monday movie. We'll be going over that polygon stuff and bringing this whole modeling core together. Take care and happy modeling.